I'm Missy Howard and thank you for tuning into the Trucker Barbie channel. This is segment two of how to be a good team driver. In order to be a successful team driver, you want to be someone that people don't mind being around. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few more things about how to be a good team driver. Okay, um, one thing that is really irritating when you are back there trying to sleep is your team driver has the window rolled down and they're cussing and yelling out the window at another driver, a shipper, receiver, something like that. It's really quite unnecessary. What you need to do if you need to cuss someone out or have a discussion with someone that might be loud, you need to get out of the truck, okay? And when you do that, you want to open the door, all right? And don't slam the door. We've talked about that in the first video, okay? Because your team driver don't want to hear that. They're trying to sleep. You open the door, okay? You close it quietly from the outside and when you get back in, you pull it shut like that, okay? So there's hardly any noise, hardly any motion on the truck or anything when you do it that way. Okay, uh, another thing would be, uh, don't be a slob, okay? Uh, don't leave your papers and your trash and your pee bottles laying around. Uh, you know, if you have a pee bottle, tuck it into a cabinet, uh, put it in a bag, something like that. Nobody wants to see your pee. Okay, they really don't, I promise you they don't. Uh, another thing would be, um, let's say you're back there sleeping and your shift starts at 2 a.m. What you're gonna wanna do is set your alarm for say 1.30 a.m. or 1 a.m. depending on how long it takes you to get your act together. Okay, like uh, drink your coffee, get dressed and so on. Your team driver really doesn't wanna wake you up and uh, there might not be enough time on the load for you to take a half an hour to get yourself together, okay, once your shift starts. So keep these things in mind. Uh, so yeah, set an alarm for yourself. Don't be a slob and uh, don't be yelling out the window at people, okay, while your team driver's back there trying to sleep. Another thing you need to learn is you need to be able to work independently. Uh, you don't want to be waking up your team driver for loading and unloading and getting help with this and that. So you want to try to want to learn your job as quick as possible to minimize uh, having to wake up your team driver. You need to learn to operate the Qualcomm by yourself. Um, handle shipping and receiving and loading and unloading and all of that, paperwork, everything. You need to be able to work independently for your entire shift. Another thing is when your shift is just about over, um, you know, let's say you and your team driver agreed to switch at three every day. Each of you needs to be ready to take over by 2.30 because uh, the driver that's driving may have only taken one 30 minute break and that is only going to allow you 11 and a half hours in the seat and the other person 11 and a half hours in the sleeper. So be ready to take over half an hour before, you know, your shift would start. And, um, you know, just be considerate. Um, when your team driver is talking on the phone, try not to interrupt them 500 times, um, unless it's really important. Um, discuss things with your team driver, like, do you want me to wake you up to discuss a load? Okay most of them are going to say no. I'm going to say no. Uh, what really should be happening is the person who is sleeping should be able to turn their phone completely off and the person that's driving or on duty or would normally be on duty, okay, during that time should take all the calls, okay. Unless the person that is sleeping is the first seat driver and they want Okay, they want to be awakened with phone calls. They want to negotiate all the loads. In that case, it's not a problem. But uh, the way me and my team drivers have pretty much always done it is when they're sleeping, I keep my phone on and they can turn their phone off and I handle all negotiations and vice versa. Another thing is, you know, if your team driver negotiates a load and they don't quite get the rate you thought they should have gotten or something like that, you know, don't be all pissy with them about it. You know, 
they're probably going to learn their lesson, especially if they haven't been uh, expediting very long. Uh, very kindly explain to them, you know, here's how I would have negotiated that load and why. Here's why. And uh, yeah, try to be calm. Uh, there's nothing to get really angry about here, okay? You might not make as much money as you normally would have if you would have neg negotiated the load, okay? So don't get all crazy. Get a grip on yourself, okay? Things are going to happen like that out here. This is not a perfect life, okay? So get a good handle on that, all right? And uh, the biggest thing that will get you in trouble out here I tell people all the time, this is the easiest job in the world. You've got to go out of your way to screw it up. And how you screw it up is, with a team driver, is focusing on the little nitty nitty crap, like uh, ashes on the floor, or um, uh, somebody left their garbage bags beside the truck and forgot to take them in before they went to bed, or something like that. Don't get focused on the small stuff, folks. This is about money out here. Stay focused on that, okay? Don't get focused on things like you're unhappy with where your team driver parked. Put yourself off duty driving and park the truck where you want to park it, okay? Don't get all crazy because somebody didn't park where you want them to park, okay? That's how things get messed up out here. It's the little ninny ninny crap stuff that people fight about that causes teams to break up, okay? Stay focused on the big picture. Get away from the little picture, all right? Be considerate. Be quiet so your team driver can sleep. And you should be a successful team. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. And y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.